Okay, in this video, we're gonna do another verification example for Stokes' theorem. So let's just recall Stokes' theorem real quick. So if S is a nicely defined surface with a boundary curve C, and F is a vector field which has continuous partials on a region containing that surface S, then we have a relation between the line integral over, over the bounding curve and the surface integral over that surface. And that is the line integral over the bounding curve of f dot dr is equal to the integral over the surface of the curl of f dot ds. So verification means we need to calculate both sides of Stokes' theorem to make sure that they're the same. So this might seem like a bummer because Stokes' theorem gives us the ability just to calculate one or the other, but in fact, this makes this a really good exercise for brushing up on the skills um, of calculating both of these. Okay, so the example we want to look at is this vector field F, which is z comma x z comma x y, and then our surface is this paraboloid z equals x squared plus y squared below the plane z equals 4. And I should say like below or equal to the plane z equals 4. Okay, so let's go ahead and make a picture. So this is a nice special case where our surface is defined as a function of x and y, which doesn't always happen. Um, so here we have x, y, z. And so our surface, like I said, is this paraboloid. So it's like a bowl. So it's kind of opening up like this. Like that. And then it, it is capped at the top. z equals 4. So let's go ahead and put right in here, this is like the point uh, z equals 4 right there. Okay, good. Now, you might say, well, what region in the plane helps us parameterize the surface? But that's not too hard to see in this case. If we take a projection of the fattest point of this surface down to the plane, we're going to get a circle of radius 2. So that means our region down here, which we generally call D in the plane, that parameterizes it as a circle of radius 2. I should say a disk of radius 2 because that contains the inside as well. So let's go ahead and write that. So D equals X comma Y where um, X squared plus Y squared is less than or equal to fourth. So that makes a disk of radius two. And that screams to use polar coordinates, which is what we will do later. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the surface integral first. Notice we can parameterize the surface um, in a really nice way given the fact that we have this is a surface defined as a function x and y. So that means we can parameterize it like x comma y comma x squared plus y squared. Okay. And then I'll leave it to you guys to check this. Um, this is a fairly common formula which we run into a lot when we parameterize surfaces this way. If we take Sx cross Sy, which that'll be part of the surface integral over here, we're going to get uh, minus 2x minus 2y comma 1. And in general, you get minus the partial with respect to x here, the partial with respect to y here, and then 1 here, where those partials are of this function that are defining this. The next thing we want to check is to make sure that this thing is positively oriented because when we get around to it, this uh, curve up here is going to be oriented uh, in this counterclockwise rotation. But notice that this is an inward pointing normal vector. So let's see if we can draw that a little bit. So this is an inward pointing normal vector, so it's kind of hard to fit in there which means that if we're walking along the inside of the rim of this bowl, if you look to the left, you'll see the surface. So this is positively oriented. So it works with the orientation that we'll put on the curve in just a second. Okay, great. So now let's go ahead and calculate the curl of our vector field, because we're gonna need that as well. And so again, I won't calculate this. You've hopefully done some examples of calculating curl. It's just really a matter of taking some partial derivatives. I will say that you get uh, the following. You'll get 0, 1 minus y, comma z. But notice, we're going to want to evaluate z on the surface. So for our purposes, it'll be 0, 1 minus y, and then x squared plus y squared. That's what we get when we put it on the surface. Okay, now we can go ahead and calculate the surface integral part of Stokes' theorem. So we have the integral of the curl 
dot ds. So that's going to be the double integral over d, where like I said before, d is that disk in the xy plane. And now we have this uh, 0, 1 minus y, comma, x squared plus y squared. And we're dotting that with um, minus 2x minus 2y, 1, and then da. OK. So we've got something like that going on. So now let's see what we have. We have the double integral over d of, so notice 0 times minus 2x, that's going to give us 0. And then we have 1 minus y times negative 2y. So we'll have 2y squared minus 2y when all is done distributing and changing signs. And then finally, this uh, x squared plus y squared uh, times 1. So that'll be plus x squared plus y squared dA. Great. So now the next thing that I want to do is change this to polar coordinates. So in other words, I'll let x equal r cos theta, um, y equal r sine theta. That's going to make dA equal to r dr d theta, just from standard change of variable rules for polar coordinates. That's going to make x squared plus y squared equal to r squared. So that's a simplification that happens right here. And then this is going to be equal to something which we'll write on the next line. So that's going to give us an iterated integral in r and theta of, let's see, this is going to be 2 r squared sine squared theta. So that's what we get for this one right here, minus 2 r sine theta. So that's what we get from this one right here, plus r squared, and then times r dr d theta, where our r is going to go from 0 to 2, and our theta is going to go from 0 to 2 pi, because we want to draw this whole disk down here in the plane. Okay, so now we're like pretty much home free. This is just a nice um, iterated double integral. So I'll go ahead and pull that up, and we'll finish that off. Okay, so I pulled that up, and then from the last board, I also distributed the r through that was part of the dA component. Now, the next thing that I want to do is split this into three double integrals, and notice each of the double integrals will be made up of these terms, and they are all functions of r times functions of theta, which allows us to break that double integral into the product of two single integrals. So that first one, which is an orange, is going to be given by the integral from 0 to 2 pi of sine squared theta d theta times the integral from 0 to 2 of 2r cubed dr. So again, that is the orange one. And then uh, this next one is going to be minus, so the integral from 0 to 2 pi of sine theta d theta, and then the integral from 0 to 2 of 2r squared uh, dr. Okay. And then finally, uh, we have plus the integral from 0 to 2 pi of d theta, and then the integral from 0 to 2 of r cubed dr. So let's go ahead and underline these in the appropriate colors. Great. Now another thing to notice is that uh, this bit right here is going to go to 0, because when we take uh, the antiderivative of sine, we get cosine evaluated at 2 pi, and 0 is the same thing, so that's going to cancel. And then here, we can use the fact that sine squared becomes uh, 1 half, 1 minus cosine 2 theta. And now this 2 and this 2 are going to cancel. So now that's going to give us the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 1 minus uh, cos 2 theta d theta. And then let's go ahead and take the antiderivative here. That's going to be uh, multiplied by r to the 4 over 4 evaluated from 0 to 2. And then let's see what we get over here. This is going to be plus 2 times pi times r to the 4th over 4 evaluated from 0 to 2 again. So now let's see if we can simplify this real quick. Notice if we take the antiderivative of cosine 2 theta, we'll get half sine 2 theta. Again, evaluated at 2 pi and 0, that's going to give us 0. So this thing all zeroes out as well. 
which means all we're doing is taking the antiderivative of one d theta. In other words, we'll just get two pi for this. So notice, uh, that's what we have for each of these. This is just gonna be uh, two pi times this thing, and then we have another two pi times that thing. But notice this thing is just uh, 16 over four, which is four, so that gives us two pi times four, which is eight pi, plus another two times, two pi times four, which is eight pi, so anyway, we get 16 pi for the solution. Okay, I'll clean up the board, and then we'll look at the line integral side to make sure we get the same thing. We just calculated the surface integral side of Stokes' theorem and we found out that we got 16 pi. Now let's go ahead and calculate the line integral side. So that means we need to parametrize this boundary curve up here, but that's actually not so hard. Notice it's just a circle of radius two, which has been boosted up to the plane z equals four. So we get two uh, cosine t, to sine t comma four. Again, taking inspiration from uh, polar coordinates there. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and use this parameterization to calculate this line integral side of Stokes' theorem. So we have the line integral over this curve of f dot dr. So that is going to be the integral, zero to two pi of f, where it has been evaluated on this curve. So notice we have z, which is gonna be given by four. And then we have x times z. So that's going to be eight cosine. And then we're going to have x times y, so that's going to be 4 times cosine t times sine t. So let's just reiterate what this term right here is. It is f evaluated on the curve, which is exactly what we need. And then we need to dot this into r prime because that's the formula for a vector field um, line integral. So that's going to be equal to minus 2 sine t, uh, 2 cos t, and then zero dt. And then again, just to reiterate, this part right here is r prime of t. Okay, now we can do this dot product. Notice that this term doesn't matter at all because it is being dotted into the zero part. And so that's going to leave us with uh, the integral from 0 to 2 pi. We have 4 times minus 2 sine t. So that's minus 8 sine t. And then we have 8 cosine times 2 cosine. So that's going to be 16 cosine squared t dt. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is notice that by a power reducing formula, this thing is eight uh, plus eight uh, cosine two t. Again, we used a similar power reducing formula earlier in the video. We use those all the time for these kind of things. So let's go ahead and take the antiderivative. So the antiderivative of this thing is going to be eight cosine t, and then we have plus eight t, and then plus four sine 2t, where we kind of had to use the chain rule there. Okay, good. Now the next thing we want to notice, if we plug 2 pi or 0 into these things, we get the same quantity, which means they cancel out, which means all we need to do is plug 2 pi and 0 into 8t, but that's going to give us 16 pi, which is exactly what we got calculating the other way. And so this verifies Stokes' theorem for this example.